heartfelt and sacred discussions about our culture, faith traditions, and community. We invite guests we are open and willing to share their journey to disrupt the silence on their personal and professional interruptions that have impacted their lives as it relates to mental health. Kathy and I are passionate about every episode and committed to providing actionable advice that you can apply today to reinvent yourself on your life journey and encourage you to develop a path toward healing. I am one of your hosts, Reverend O, and our podcast today is titled, Don't Change My Name in Honor of Women's History Month. Awesome. Yes. And our special, special guest today is Reverend Marsha J. Clinscale, Ph.D., Hello. Hi. Welcome, Marsha. How are you? Marsha, do you prefer Marsha, Reverend Marsha, Reverend Clinscale? What do you prefer? You can call me Marsha. Marsha. Okay. We I love it. So we can come <laughs> We're having a conversation. That is absolutely right. I just want to share that Reverend Marsha is our guest today as we honor and recognize her. Um, and all women during Women's History Month. She has been instrumental in educating and empowering women to thrive in their careers, earn their doctorate degree, and these women along with her are changing the world. So congratulations and thank you, Marsha. Marsha, you have a very unique story to share about these doctor, uh, these doctoral students, students, and one that particularly asked permission to conduct a research on Ancestry.com to learn more about your father. And that discovery led you to locate your siblings, two brothers, a host of nieces and nephews, and a sister who, if anyone could not guess by now, is my co-host, the Reverend Odell. So this is going to be an awesome story. I was so excited about this all week. I've been excited since she told me, so this is a wonderful story. But before you share your story, can you tell us uh, where you're living right now and if you are still active in ministry? Uh, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Um I'm active at the Ray of Hope Community Church, um, pastors uh, Martin L. Espinosa and Reverend Dr. Renita Wing. Those are the co-pastors of the church. My, my daughter has been a member of that church for years. And so when I moved to Nashville, I started to go to church there and I got involved in ministry there. Okay. So are you also a, a co-pastor there as well? No, 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 no. No, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I, that that was funny. quick. <laughs> I know that was quick. That was quick. Oh no. I don't want that. No way. So I have so many, so many questions for you um, to discuss. And I learned that your mother was also a pioneer and should be acknowledged as well during Women's History Month. Can you tell us about your mother's journey from Florida to Denver, where you were born? Is that correct? You know, Texas. My mother's you from were, Texas. She's from your East mother's. Texas. Okay. From All East right. Texas. And okay. um, she got the opportunity. She wanted to go to beauty school and she went to... Dallas Fort Worth, and uh, it was Madame e. Coleman. That was the name of this of the uh, school. But she got to study as well with Madame uh, Walker, C.J. Walker. Oh, um, so that was all very very exciting for her because uh, this is really cosmetology is the uh, career path that mm -hmm. she wanted to take. And and she studied under Madam C.J. Walker. What did she What did she do when she was studying under her? Well, now I don't know that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. These you're talking about. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? 1942, 43. You know, they're they're doing the pressing. They're doing the curling. They're you know they're doing a lot of different things. Okay. Um, but I can't. Uh, I can't recall her talking to me about specific uh, gifts that she, you know, skill sets that she got. Okay. Okay. So how did your mother um, meet your father? 
my mother um, met my father because she lives in lives in Denver. Okay, mm -hmm. so she moves to Denver. And there were several. It was going to be about three of them, and they wanted to open a shop together. Uh, her, a dear friend of hers from Tyler, Texas, uh, already lived there, and her her husband was in uh, the army, and they were stationed at Fort Warren in Wyoming. And so in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. And so her husband's name was Charles. And so Charles and um, my, you know, my father would come to Denver for weekends. Okay. And so it was on one of the weekends um, that they came that my mother met him but it's really very interesting my mother really had told charles that she did not really want to meet anybody right now because <laughs> she was really busy with her career and so she said i'm really just not i'm not doing that right now dating and so um charles just kept after her kept after every time he came down he would say, you just got to meet him. You just got to meet him. You just got to meet him. So I think it was like three o'clock in the morning and they called and, and I, and mommy said, oh my God, this is, they're going to cook breakfast and let's have an early breakfast. And Eva was her friend. And so she said, okay, uh, I, I'll come. And I think she wanted to check this off the list because she was tired of being asked to do it so she just wanted to check it off. <laughs> i love it i yeah. love it yeah. so did you ever meet your father no no okay what were you told about him um my my after they met they um they began to date immediately. Okay. And, um, he, he was a Sergeant in the army. So he was, um, very attractive, tall, dark, handsome, um, a leader. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she, and when he would come down, I remember when they would go to this part of Denver, which was basically the black community, and they would, um, she said that they could walk in a room and literally the room would get silent because of their presence. And everybody wanted to know who this man was. <laughs> so, so he had a lot of, um, from my understanding, um, uh, he really had a presence, a very mm -hmm. strong presence. And seeing as he was, as they would say, tall, dark, and handsome, <laughs> um, uh, that, you know, she told me that about him, but she also told me that, um, and that he was a great leader in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. She also told me that um, he wanted to marry her. Okay. And she was very, yeah. And he started talking about and getting married and, and he, and, and, um, she, he was asking her to, um, to, um, uh, have his child. Okay. And, um, she told me that she had decided that she just probably would not be a woman that would have children. So she wasn't really trying to to hear that, and and so and she really wasn't even trying to entertain getting married. She mm -hmm. said they were just moving way, way, way too fast. Um, but you know, as things go, she did marry him, and um, and three months later, she was pregnant with me, and. Um, 
uh, you know, she, yeah. I, you know, I guess she was happy about that at the time. <laughs> and, and, uh, because she didn't think this is something she'd do. So I think she, yeah. uh, adjusted to thinking, okay, this will be good. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, uh, probably she said she was in her trimester. So she was three months pregnant and, uh, she gets a letter from uh, a woman in Savannah with a picture of a baby boy who said that he was married. So that her husband was married. Mm -hmm. That her husband was oh, married and had, a, and, and had a baby boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I'm going to safely assume... Yeah, I'm going to safely assume she confronted him, right? Well, I, I, knowing my mother's personality, she did. Um, <laughs> but, you know, she immediately, her thing was, how dare you? You know, how dare you do something like this? This was mm -hmm. totally unnecessary and mm -hmm. and did not have to uh happen and so she wrote the military she wrote him up and she said she would keep writing until uh she could get him uh, broken down because it was wrong and um that's what she took off to do and um yeah. <laughs> I learned not too long ago that she, she was successful. That, that was brave of her. Yeah. Oh, she's not, she doesn't play. She doesn't play in her. So I think, you know, that's the story. Um, the, the, the story is, is painful in yeah. this way in that she was so excited to leave uh, Dallas Fort Worth mm -hmm. coming to Denver. She had a sister in Denver. And so that's why Denver became attractive. Okay, my sister's in Denver. I'll go to Denver. And uh, these other ladies would come. Um, so starting her career in cosmetology and all was just, just something that she just so terribly, terribly wanted. And now, you know, she's pregnant and her life is getting ready to change. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I learned after I met my sister, I called a cousin of mine and was telling her how Marsha found out that Duke was married and had a child. And my cousin said, mm -hmm. well, how do you think your mother found out? She found out the same way that, you know, our brother's mother, her name was Wilma. She was an educator, sent my mother a letter and said, you know, Duke is married, and by then she had two sons and has two sons. And that's how my mother found out about my brothers, the exact same Oh, way. my goodness. <laughs> you got to yes. be kidding me. So it's the same story. Oh, same my story. goodness. Same it's story. The same story. Um, oh. So, yeah. so it wasn't... Um, you know, it was our father and it was, we learned, I didn't know a lot of this until later in life, but that's pretty much what happened. My mother stayed in contact with Wilma and mm -hmm. she found out that he had two sons. They were in Virginia. So my mother would, you know, she stayed with my father and it was until later in life after my mom had passed that I learned that they were never married. So all my life, I thought my parents were married, had the okay. same last name. And when I'm going to, from Boston to New York to see them, they're, you know, living and looking like a married couple. And it's Duke Montgomery and Mary Montgomery and Odell Montgomery. So mm -hmm. those they're my parents, they're married. Right. And it wasn't until later, she had passed away that I learned that my parents were never married. But she had a relationship with Wilma and would send money and gifts for the boys for Christmas. 
And as they got, our brothers got older, I learned that they did come up to New York and to see their dad. So how did you learn that they weren't married, Odell? I, uh, mm, I was in the car with my relatives and they were talking about it. They were a little older than me. And she mentioned that, hey, you know, your mother was never married to your father. And it was heartbreaking to, mm. to, to learn it that way. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I thought it was mean. It was heartbreaking. So I, re I remember going back to the house and I called my grandmother and who told you that? And I, I told her and she was heartbroken. I called my aunt who my mother was very close with. So I, I called them and they were heartbroken that I found this out. They said, we all knew, but we were told not to tell you. It was a secret. We, we promised your mother we would keep. And my brothers knew. Everybody oh. knew but me. So okay. that's how I found out. Yeah. Yeah. So your grandmother wasn't happy about that then. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I mean, unfortunate. It had me look at my mother differently like why would you stay and, and when you're looking back why would you stay and go through all of that with mm -hmm. him if you weren't married but she made a motherly sacrifice she yeah. stayed she you know she did what a mother would do and i wish she didn't have to pay that price but she chose that's what she wanted to do and she did it she wanted to make sure that I had, cause she knew that I, she knew my father. So she okay. probably knew that if she left, she, we wouldn't get anything cause that was his character. Yeah. So she okay. stayed with him to make sure that I was provided for and would send money down to um, Virginia for the boys. But I never knew that I had a sister. No one ever said, and you have a sister out there somewhere too. Mm -hmm. And you think she knew? Do you think your mother knew that? No, I think if she knew there was a sister, I would. She would. She would have told me. Okay. She would have yeah. told me. Yes. Yeah. It's. It seems like it because she was so open about everything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how did how did um, this question is for both of you? How did you learn that you had brothers? So, Marsha, I'll ask you first. How did you learn that you had brothers? You know, I was telling Odell that my my doctoral student, her name is Dr. Nikita Harris. She's a professor at the University of Alabama. And, you know, she's always, she always into doing different types of research. And the day that she, that I, I had to get my birth certificate. I'm new here. I'm going to have, I still haven't done it, but I was going down to, to, to the uh, motor vehicle to get my driver's license. And they were requiring, cause I have Maryland driver's license because I came here from the, uh, the Washington DC area. So they were requiring me to get my birth certificate and also my, um, uh, the, dis the dissolution of my marriage to, to approve because they wanted to see how my name came from uh, Montgomery to Clink Scales. I was just incensed. I, I was just incensed that I had to do this. So I did it. And um, on the day that I received it, I just happened to look at the birth certificate and notice, you know, that he had signed it and all. But I what caught my attention was I said, wow, I didn't know they were the same age. That's what caught my attention. For some mm -hmm. reason in my mind, I thought he was older than her for some reason. But, and so I was telling um, Nikita that on the phone. I said, you know, it's interesting. I said, all these years, I thought my, uh, I always said biological father was, uh, you know, older. Uh, than my mother, because my mother married two years later. And so I had a wonderful daddy. See, so in that way, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I was able to continue to say biological because, you know, he's left and not left in such a nice way. 
Anyway, mm -hmm. she said, oh, what is his name? And she said, I'm, on, I'm sitting right now on Ancestry.com. Now, I had over the years tried to do research myself uh, mm -hmm. because uh, a, a friend of mine just recently said, I had the why question. Um, mm -hmm. My... Uh, and it makes a lot of sense now what she said to me. This is just recently, a few days ago. Um, my 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 PhD is in organizational communication, and so I'm an organizational and management type consultant. And so, you know, my whole work mm -hmm. is around deconstructing systems and understanding phenomena and how could people communicate within those systems, right? And to improve them, actually. Right. All right, so this is a family system. And so what I want to know is why. This is all I want to know is why did this person do this? Because that was my mother's question. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? And I grew mm -hmm. up hearing that. So when she went online to, you know, to do the research, I, I was, you know, I told Odell, I was just... I was very indifferent to it. I, I really didn't think that she was going to find anything. Um, I just gave it to her I, because I just, okay, here it is. Here's his name. So I didn't, I didn't have anything invested in terms mm -hmm, of, oh, mm -hmm. I hope she finds something, you know, all these years I haven't found something. I had come to a point where I was saying, you know what? I don't know. I have prayed over this. Clear, clearly God doesn't want me to know I'm done with it so when she mm -hmm. comes back within a couple of hours saying that she had found Odell and then a, a, a guy named Duke B. Montgomery in Arizona I, I was I was devastated I said what you know I, I, I was just really are you, are you serious and so she says yeah so what do you want me to do mm -hmm. well you know, I was, I was like, I don't know what I want you to do. She said, well, we're in it now, doc. And you know, <laughs> so we as well go all the way. And I'm like, what? You know. You got to make a decision, right? <laughs> yeah, we're in this thing now. So we as well go on yeah. and I'll email uh, Odell and I'll email both of them and tell them in this box, you know, uh, that I'm doing research for you and you're trying to find out if this person is any uh, has any relationship to you. That's how that happened. Wow! So yeah. when she, isn't that? And so when she was able to contact Odell, Odell responded um, immediately and said, "You know, she was being protective. You know, and said, well, tell this person to email me." That's what she told her. Tell this mm -hmm. person to email me. And then Odell decided to go online and see if she could find me. And then she found me uh, uh, preaching a sermon at Metropolitan AME in, in, in Washington because that was my church and I was on staff mm -hmm. there. See? But Odell was looking at me and saying, I don't remember preaching at that church because we look so much alike. <laughs> so she said, she and said, right, right, right. Then, it was, then she then she said it was after that that um the spirit led her to uh tell her tell tell her to call me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what happens is when you're, see, Kathy's not a Facebook person like I am. So when you can't sleep, I am know, not. You start, you, you, know, <laughs> you start scrolling Facebook, you know, and people are like, okay, who's up? Say, hey, <laughs> you know. So I was scrolling, <laughs> scrolling Facebook. It was a Saturday, Saturday morning. And I saw this message in my message box and messenger and said, you know, I'm, she introduced herself and I'm doing research for my, for my mentor. She's looking for her father, Duke B. Montgomery. And I didn't see the year. So my brother's name is Duke mm -hmm. B. Montgomery. He named his son Duke B. Montgomery. So I'm like, all right, this is my brother. This is my nephew. And then when I saw 1913, I said, okay, that's dad. Someone's looking for their father, which is my father. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
I said, here's my email, have her to email me. Yeah. I will, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Mm-hmm. And I rolled back over and went to sleep and something inside me said, get up. And I'm like, what? I said, go back to that email. So I went back to Facebook Messenger and I looked up her name and I, Kathy, I'm lying in bed, no glasses yeah. on. And I'm fig- trying to figure this out. So I type in Reverend Marsha and I'm like, <laughs> clink scale. Didn't even know how to spell clink scale. So I'm looking at it twice, <laughs> trying to figure it out. And I go to Google, I pull it up and this YouTube comes up and I'm still not wearing my glasses. And it, you know, it goes through the introduction. Then all of a sudden you see this black woman with short hair has on a preacher's collar an AME robe and she's preaching. And I looked at it. I said, I never preached at this church. Mm-hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't remember <laughs> preaching at this church. And I said, wait a second. And I got up, put my glasses on and looked at her. Her name was coming across the screen. And I said, oh my goodness. And I turned the light on and I looked at it again on my tablet. And that's when I went back to Messenger and said, no, 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 have her to call me because Mm -hmm. obviously she's real, but looks so, I look so much like her. It was startling. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided that she can call me. And I couldn't wait until later on when people woke up so that I could send them that picture. And I, I, I called you that day, <laughs> Kathy. I sent it you to did. Kathy that you day. Did. Kathy, look mm-hmm. at this. Do we, do we look alike? <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? What was that phone call like for, for you? It was terrible for me. It was just <laughs> absolutely terrible. It was really, it was, yeah. It was. See, I told uh, Odell and I are having this conversation. I mean, I was all over the place because this isn't anything that I was trying to do. I wasn't mm-hmm. really serious about it. It's too. It's too bad to say that, but I was, and I was like, Nikita, go on. Here's the name. Da 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 da. I'm off. I'm. You know mm-hmm. that's. And so when something comes out of it. Mm-hmm. It was just devastating, and you're mm-hmm. awestruck, and and you were like, "What? I'm mm-hmm. an only child, you know. I right. don't have siblings, so you know, and had no desire for them, you know. I'm an only child, so what do you mean I have siblings and all of this? Although I knew my mother told me from that letter that the, the Wilma sent, she put a picture. And now we know it was Ben, the one that's in Arizona, because mm-hmm. he's a year older than me. He's a year older than me. So um, okay. I, 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 I knew, I, I knew it in that way. But mommy told me that story when I got ready to go to elementary school because she said she didn't want anybody coming up to me telling me that you know, this isn't your father talking about my father. Um, Mm -hmm. Mr. Hart, it's not your father. You know, your father left your mother, whatever that kind of conversation is in the homes Mm -hmm. that children could pick up. And mother was, was, was determined to say, I'm going to own this story. I'm going to tell you what happened. And um, if you ever meet in Montgomery and, and heaven forbid you grow up, I don't want you find out who he is. I don't want you dating your brother because you do have a brother <laughs> out there, you know, but mm-hmm. I never met mm-hmm. a Montgomery. So I never thought about it. So calling Odell was, I don't know. I, um, I, 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 I do a lot of study with, uh, with Carl, Carl Jung, the um, Swiss psychologist and, I use a lot of his theory in regard to trying to understand phenomena often in these systems. Mm -hmm. And I said, this was so far down into my unconscious that I was literally Mm -hmm. just babbling to her. I I made, I I know I made no sense because she she did. I was, um, she did. She she made no sense. I was on my it way made to. Made no sense. I know. I was on my way to D.C. for the weekend to see my cousin Daphne, and 
So I had you know, called Kathy that morning before I left at noon, called some friends, you know, look at this picture. Look at what do you think? And my daughter said, yeah, mom, you have a sister, you know, hands down, mm -hmm. end of subject. So I'm on the train and Marsha calls and she's, you know, she's tap towing ar around the conversation. Like, I don't want them to say that I'm ruining their father's good name and am I for real? So as she's trying to be nice and try to figure things out, I said, let's, I said, what's it? let's stop right here. I said, you are not trying to, you cannot ruin our father's good name because he didn't have one. I said, um, we already know that we had siblings out there, so we're not surprised. I said, we know what kind of mm. father we had. I said, Duke was a rolling stone. We know that. So she felt, I could see the whew, sigh of relief coming out. And I yeah. said, I looked at your picture and I said, I look so much like you. It is unbelievable. And she started laughing. And you could hear she was just ner she was nervous and I was excited. I'm like, I got a sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, I could understand Marsha's point of view, right? Because a, she's trying to first figure this all out. That you know, um, almost almost like a level of portrayal, right? From your father's side, like, well, now there's more siblings than the one I even knew about. So you're trying to deal with that. And then also you don't know what Odell knows and doesn't know. So you're trying to like tiptoe so that you don't tell her something that she might not be aware of. And so that's a whole lot to kind of bring to a conversation and still kind of protect your own heart as well. But yeah, Odell is that type of person. She just gets excited about life. And so she would be excited about this to know that she had a sister. I wish I could have been there for the the conversation. And, and so, um, I mean, how, how I, 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 Marsha, I hear it from you, how you're processing, right? Or are you still processing it? Is it something that you feel that it's going to take a minute to process or? I, I told Odell just the other day, I said, you know, we are, we are, you know, I, I'm talking to her and talking to Ben and, and, and my other brothers, what's his name, Pahu. Pahu. I, I yeah. great people, you know, you, uh, you talk to them, you enjoy them, you know, they're great people. They've done some wonderful things with their lives, you know, so I'm not trying to, um, you know, hurt anyone or be mean any kind of way. But yeah, I am still processing. And the reason why mm -hmm. I think I'm still processing is because I carried this story out of the pain of my mother. And my mother could not let this story go. She could not. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, you know, you look just like him. How could someone do this? You know, what do you think about it now that you're older? How could a person do something? I mean, so she was in such pain and the interruption was her career. And she used to mm -hmm. say to my grandmother, I think I could have put Marsha on my, cause she was ambidextrous. And so she said, I think I could have put Marsha on my right hip and and curled hair with my left hand, you know, or flipped it around. Mm. But during those years, it's not like now. People, you get married. You get married. And if you you got a child you're walking around with, mm -hmm. it's a disgrace in the community. And so her, her, her mother wanted her to get married. And she had met my daddy. <laughs> My daddy was on the train coming up from Texas and he was going to Portland because his, he had a brother that lives in Portland. And so mm -hmm. he got off, he's gonna spend the night in Denver and then, you know, get on the train the next day. And he met my mother at some event and uh, he said, oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna leave tomorrow. 
And my mother told him, you better leave. You better leave because I'm not trying to see you. I mean, she just gave him a hard time. And I heard that story forever too. But I teased daddy and said, you never got to Portland. So last two summers ago, my daughter's company is headquartered in Portland. And she said, come do your mm -hmm. birthday with me in Portland. So when I flew to Portland, I got off the plane. I said, daddy, you made it to Portland, you know, because that was the thing. You should have gone to Portland. You should have gone to Portland. And mm -hmm. so she could never, she even, she married, you know, she loved daddy, but she did not love him enough to feel it was okay that her career had shifted. Even though he, he built her a, a shop in her basement, that's not the same for her. She's a people person. Mm -hmm. She wanted more engagement than that. And so I think I've had to realize that the betrayal, the, the abandonment, the rejection was all, now I'm gonna show you how God has been giving me pieces of this. When I was in seminary, and I read this article about utero experiences, you know, mm -hmm. and so how you get so much stuff, utero, you know, and you're wondering why you act in certain ways. And this is some of the stuff that your mother was carrying. So mm -hmm. I think for me, I got this rejection. I, I get very sensitive easily. Uh, um, of this whole thing on abandonment, betrayal, that seem, those three things seem to be very key to me out of this experience. And so mm -hmm. I carried my mother because I so badly wanted to fix this for her yeah. and I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't fix it. So yeah. the best thing I could do was let me find out who this person mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And then I find out in a startling way when I'm just trying to get Tennessee driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, yeah, but you know what? See, that tells you how God works sometimes because what was the other way that would have made you feel better, right? And so, <laughs> and, right. and so, right. and so you're processing it one way, and Odell, you're like <laughs> giddy. And so, how are you? <laughs> I don't have to ask you how you're processing, but I'm going to ask, how are you processing? Because I'm gonna, I'm asking you that for a reason. And I do this to Odell all the time because all the time um, she Odell is is my friend. But I recognize that her role is also a minister, although when I talk to her, I'm talking to her as a, a friend. But sometimes it rolls over into ministry. And so so now you're in that you're on that fine line because you're talking to her and you're excited because now you realize you have a sister and you're meeting her for the first time. But I heard you in your conversation say that you could hear there was some hesitance in her voice. I and could. so. Right. And so that to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that to me is the minister side of you, right? Yeah. Because while you wanted to just say, oh, this is wonderful, it's kind of like you had to say, oh, 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 a minute, I hear something else coming from her. So how, how did you deal with that? It was important for me to listen. And I wanted to hear her talk because it was about, it was Marsha's story then. You know, she found us. I didn't find her. So I wanted her to open the door and to start conversations. And I could hear, you know, her voice was cautious. Do I say this? Do I ask this? Um, I don't know. But I was so daggone excited. I'm on the train going, get to it, get them like this, you know? And I just had to break the ice and go, <laughs> okay, sis, let's just stop. And I called her sis. I said, let's just stop, okay? Mm -hmm. And I said, this is what I know. But for me, and Marsha and I talked about this this week, you know, she says, you know, same question. How are you processing this? I've done this before. This is how I met my brothers. I didn't grow up with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went to my parents and said, I want a sibling. I want a brother. And my mother gets up from the kitchen table. She goes to the 
the rotary phone and she calls my brother and says, Ben, your sister <laughs> wants to meet you. And I'm like, I don't know much, but I know that's not how I know that's not how it's done. Um, you all have to go into the room and close the door or something. You don't go on the telephone and call somebody. <laughs> and that's when I found out that I had two brothers. See, they knew about me, but I didn't know mm-hmm. about them. And I didn't wow. meet my brothers until I was 17. I got on a plane. I flew to Virginia. I remember telling Pa who, you're not going to know what I look like. So I'm going to have on a white scarf that says it was winter that says Odell. And this is what I'll be wearing. And psh, got off the plane. It's like, dad, we look alike. So it was easy to detect. And we sat and we talked and they never asked me about dad. We talked about each other. Because growing up, I grew up with cousins who I called my sisters. And so I never had any biological sisters. I always wanted to know, how do I act this way? Why do I think this way? Why am I this way? And when I met my brothers, I could see my father in them. Yep, you act like Duke. Yep, you Duke. Yep, you have his mannerism. And my oldest brother, Ben, our oldest brother, Ben, looked so much like him until we met Marsha. And I said, oh, my goodness. That's the she, other thing. I look more like him than any of any them. Of them. Right now, it yeah. listen. She does. <laughs> Looks just like them. And, and you, you said, how am I processing this? <laughs> Kathy, and, 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 yeah. and, and, and since I, I, I love you, but it's been, I've never talked about Duke so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was, and I'm not going to jump. But for me, Mm -hmm. it was, I have a biological sister and who's a reverend, Mm -hmm. you know, and I said, and a reverend. And it wasn't until I met my brothers, because I always had this desire when I was at Howard that I wanted to get, I I wanted to further my education, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know what I wanted to do or could I. And when I met my brothers, um, you know, who Paul, who was a PhD candidate, but he didn't finish. And so I knew I was from a family line that was intelligent and I could do this. So I knew then when I met them that I could get my master's degree, but I was just going undergraduate. They came to my Howard University graduation and I have not let go of them. We have been in contact in sync since I was 17. No, it's fun. Howard. So, yeah, well, we, I was we just going to ask about that. Now, you were a professor at Howard. Right. And I came when she graduated. She graduated that May, and I came at the end of May. Can you believe that? No. Now, what, now, now and then if you were there, so, so Odell, you're there, and, and, and she was still teaching, would you have been in her one of her classes, do you think? I would have had to take communications. Um, okay. And I did take communications, so I had to. So, yes, I would have been in her building, definitely yeah. in her building. And I would have probably ran across her and would have just been startled. Like, and, or somebody, somebody would have said, Odell, Montgomery, listen, I saw one of my professors and you two look alike. <laughs> and never thought of anything about it, right? Even, you know, right. Because people that say something? that all, people say it all the time. You look like someone, and but it's like it. you know, yeah. and you don't, and, and you and don't. You meet them, and you say, "I don't look like that person." You know? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but, yeah. so so it, just in case you're wondering, you all do look alike, and so um, and and it is just even when Odell was sharing the story, I'm saying, and and she's also in ministry too. I mean, this it was just blowing my mind, and so. Um, it, this is just such a phenomenal story. And so, Marsha, I did hear you clearly to say that this is traumatic for you. And so oh, and I also I also mm-hmm. heard you say, because this is something we always talk about on our podcast, that, yes, at that time there was expectations. Right. And you get married and we and even for us, mm-hmm. um, it was that you grow up and you you go to college, you meet you meet a man, you get a good job and you get married and you have that two point five children, a cat and a dog and you buy the house with the white picket fence around it. And that is your life. And so what we talk about is the fact that sometimes 
that life doesn't happen the way that you want. Right. right. That right. sometimes that you don't, it doesn't just look that beautiful television picture story that we all anticipate it to happen. And so how do we, how do we deal with it when our journey is not the way that we initially plan? And so um, hearing your story, I know it was difficult for you. Um, now, so I know you all talked on the phone and that's one thing, right? And so yes. who made the suggestion about meeting each other virtually? Oh, I knew you would. I knew it was going to be you. So <laughs> by the and time, then, yeah. So Marsha and I are talking on the phone, but I'm on the train. So the train is interrupting. So my, our other brother, Pa, who calls in and I, so I have a three-way going on the phone now with a mask on. You know, so he gets on the phone and he says, listen, he says, hey, sis, welcome to the family, you know, and I could just hear Marsha on the other end emotional, but he mm. was like, I've seen your picture and you two look alike. So it's, it's, it's legit. So what we did was I asked Marsha, I, I gave her Ben's number and Pahu's number. So she talked to the brothers while I was on the train. I said, talk to them. And they knew that she was, she knew <laughs> that the phone call was coming. So they talked to her while I was on the rest of the five hour train. Cause I just let it go. And mm -hmm. I got to Maryland and I said, can we do a zoom call? And she mm -hmm. said, yes. And when she came up, it was like, <gasps> you know, it, it was, I couldn't believe it. And the mm -hmm. way she holds her head and she looks and we have the same neck and I'm looking at my dad, but I'm looking at her. <laughs> at her. And yeah. I, I'm telling you, Kathy, I never realized how much I looked like my father until mm -hmm. Marsha, until yeah. her. Because she, yeah. you know, I, I look at her because I saw my father the most out of all of us. I, I saw okay. him. So I knew his behaviors. I knew what he did. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, she look, you look just like our father. <laughs> and yet, and, and yet you had to decide whether to tell her that, right? Because she might not have been ready. But I will tell yeah. you, I will, I will add this. Uh, you guys talked about uh, mental health when the uh, program opened. Yes. And so for me, this is a, this man is a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Um. I say I don't chop it up to just, you know, Papa was a rolling stone. He's out there. No, I, I had to get deeper into this and see if if he was born in South Carolina and then there was nine of them. And if they move now to Mississippi and then his mother dies and then his father feels like he can't raise nine kids, and he's sending them off and then he sends him to to savannah and he stays in a uh, boarding house with another couple mm -hmm. and i can't imagine what that experience was like but i began to believe that detachment now from family is now giving him detachment issues he wants a family because i'm pretty sure he wanted to be with his family but then mm -hmm. he doesn't want a family you know and so why are you marrying all these people, what, what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. so they're, they're, I think it has a, for me, I, I'm beginning to feel that it has a deeper, uh, you know, root to it than just, he was just out there, you know, yes. there's, right. there's a reason behind that kind of behavior. Right. You know, and, you know and so here we got her mother, Mary, my mother, Marcelite, and then you have the brother's mother, Wilma, and then the brother tells me that, oh, and I know for myself, for some research I did do, that there were two women in Florida. Oh, my he goodness. Had so we oh, know he, he, that there was at least five people. Right. He married. Right. So, so to make sense of this, yeah, I yeah. gotta put it in a in a place yeah. Uh, of engagement where I can see he needed help. And if nothing else for your own mental health to understand that there was yeah. a reason behind this, right? Right. Yeah. He wasn't running through breaking women's hearts and moving right. on to the next one. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of one of the things that we one of the conversations that we had with Marsha when, you know, because she is telling me about my father, tell me about Duke. And it's like, okay, all right. So I've got to talk about Duke. I'm telling you, I'm 59. I haven't talked about Duke in 59 years as much as I've talked about this man (laughs) this last year. So my brother, Paul, who and I are on the phone with her and we're talking and basically he's like, Duke is a generation away from slavery Mm. and, you know, reconstruction. You have kids so they can work the farm so they could they can just work. Mm -hmm. And yes, when Marcia said, you know, this is what I learned about our dad, that he was tall, dark skinned, handsome. I said, yeah, that would be Duke. You know, that's that was him. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's it's who he was. And he worked for TWA. He was a sky captain and he women just fell all over him. He carried the luggage and everything and get tips. And I'm sure he would just have uh, a very inter. He had a very interesting um, social life, but he never drank and he didn't do drugs and he never had a criminal record. Mm-hmm. So out of all that he went through, mm-hmm he didn't do those things Mm -hmm. and he, he got, and he got cooked up with intelligent women because my brother's mother, she was an educator. Your mother was an entrepreneur. My mom was a chef. So he picked smart, educated women to be with. And he would just bring home the money and they would take care of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And then look at his children too. And all accomplished. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the yeah. fact that Marsha and I are in ministry together, I'm just like, I did. That's, uh, yeah, that floors me. I mean, I could have a whole show on that. But Marsha, let me ask you, well, let me ask both of you. Today is March 17th, although our, our podcast yeah, yeah. won't air until the 20th, but today is March 17th. It is the date of your father, your biological father's death. Yes. Odell, for you, how do you feel about that? Marsha was supposed to come on our show March 3rd, um, but she wasn't ready. So we're talking Mm -hmm. again about, you know, is she ready to come on the next time we record? And she says, okay, 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 I'm going to do it. Let's just do it the next time. What date is it? And I just said March 17th. And then it hit me, bam, oh no. And I, you know, I'm struck. She says, what's the matter? And I'm processing March 17th. So this is the day that our father passed. So the day that he passed, his daughters are connected. We're telling his story and we're creating our own story. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's something it's, it's godly. Marsha and I have had this very interesting path where we're at Howard together. She was driving. She, she was catching a train. She's in Brooklyn, you know, I mean, in Bridgeport. She's in no, Bridgeport. University of Connecticut. I was oh, I my taught goodness. in Connecticut for a, um, for a year. Yeah. So she's yeah. catching a train and she's in Bridgeport. There's Howard, there's Reverend. And when I'm talking to her on the phone and I'm like, okay, Howard University, she's a sister, she's a Reverend. And I said, are you my sorority sister? And she said, uh, unless you're an AKA. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, and I was immediately drawn to her when she came on because that's just a wonderful sorority to belong to that just even makes her even better. And so, <laughs> I think so. I think so. I, I know so. I know so. Yes, yes, my sister. I do. Isn't that awesome? And so, even even though Odell and I, you know, we banter each other on that, we know it's more important that um, we support each other as women of color, and that our sorority, although we we know we love our sorority. Um, we are in the community and we're helping other people. And, and that's what we look at as the greater good. Now, Marsha, you mentioned that you have a daughter, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and Odell, I know you have a daughter because she actually belongs to me. Yes, and so. Loves Kathy. <laughs> Kathy my daughter. But you know, when March. I, I just was going to ask you, what have your children said about this? What have, when you shared it, what have they said? Well, I'll go. Um, when I woke up that morning and I saw Marsha preaching on YouTube at the church in Maryland, 
I showed Jackie. She was like, uh, yeah, mom, you got a sister. And she was like, you got a biological sister. She said, I'm so happy for you. You have a biological sister. So, mm -hmm. and then it's, she's happy. And the brothers are, are happy. You know, they're just like, okay, we got a sister. That's how they found me. Okay, we got a sister. But I'm just over the top because it's it's the biological. And Marsha and I used to do Zoom calls. And it was, and she met the brothers. We're all on Zoom. The whole family was together mm -hmm. on Zoom for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we all got to meet one another virtually. And I'm waiting until June when I, if we weren't in a pandemic, I would be in Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. You would. <laughs> I'd have been, I'd have been there I that weekend. Her, I told her, I said, see, we have to take this thing slow. I yeah. said, we, you, I said, you see somebody that looks like you, that is opening up a whole nother world yeah. to who you are. I mean, it's a lot. One person, lot, yeah. I, I would be the one that would end up passing out, and there I am on my way over to St. Thomas Hospital. Here, you know, I told her that because uh -huh. my 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 daughter was saying to me, "Wow, mom, isn't this something?" So she was she was like, "This is really something." You 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 know, so <laughs> mom, I want you to be open because I know how you are. And see, you know, I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to close down. Uh, I'm not doing this. I'm not, this is too much. Mm -hmm. it's too much. It's it's too much. Yeah. yeah. So. And, uh, you know, Marsha, I can sympathize with you because I had a very similar story as you, and we are protective of our mothers because of the story. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, um, you know, for whatever, whatever reason. And then we find out when it's too late and not able to ask questions. And so we have to find some type of reasoning that gets us through that process to say, but maybe it was, maybe it was this reason. And maybe what I do know and what I can clearly share with you is that it wasn't us. <laughs> right? Right, so right. for whatever, Right, for whatever right. reason it happened, it just wasn't us. It wasn't our siblings' fault either. And so I initially kind of shut myself off as well. And it was angry to say, you know, how dare you now come into a life that I had already planned and it was this way. And now you're trying to, what are you trying to do? And all and 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 the and I have a, a sibling it, that was very much like Odell. All she wanted to do was to get to know me. And I shut, I shut that door. Like, wait a minute now. I gotta, you know, give me some time. I gotta get used to this. And you know, and so it was hard. It's a hard transition because she had answers. I didn't. And so, and then even the answers she had, I wasn't sure I was ready to hear them. Right. Right? <laughs> and so I, I, I definitely, I understand that. But, um, you know, my, my hope for you though, is that you do, you do get through that process, because I will tell you, if you had to have a sister and don't tell her, I told you, but if you had to have one, she would be a pretty good one to have, <laughs> but don't tell her, I told you that. Okay, but okay. <laughs> Now what Odell for you, I, and I, and I, it just blew my mind as well. You know, for me, this is a, a story, but this is your, your lives. And so I, I, I get that, you know, you could have run into each other at Howard, you, you could have run into each other anywhere, but to vote for both of you to be in the field of ministry. I mean, there's how many fields in life, right? And you're both in the field of ministry. You're both in the field of teaching and helping others. How was what I mean? When you when she said that you when well, you saw the video and Marsha, you had not known that Odell was a minister. Is that correct? I um, I don't think so. No. Okay. So when you found that out, what was that like for both of you? I, you know, I just, I, I was, <laughs> I was happy to hear about the similarities that we had, that we were so similar, you know, um, you know, in terms of who we were and what we had done with our lives, you know, um, that was, that was nice to hear. Uh, 
but I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just yeah. in awe, you know, and, yes. and so, and I think, um, uh, Odell said, well, just, you know, cause I, I said, I don't want to go on this show talking about no this. And she said, just tell the truth. You can just tell the truth. I said, I, I just have to tell the truth. And, and that was all for me. And it wasn't anything to do with her. Because I can, I mean, I, I, I can see that she's a lovely person and she's warm and she's been very warm and friendly mm -hmm. in the engagements that we've had. So I know that that's not the issue for me. It's just, yeah, you know, oh, what is this? Is it, you know, uh, and it's, see, I, I hear again, here, let, let's say it this way. It's come in a package I didn't expect, okay? Yes. All I wanted were people, older people, whomever, to tell me about this man and to break all of that down, you know? Now, yeah. they've done that. They've done a lot of that. But I didn't expect this piece of it. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Sibling? Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I am a well-known only child. Everybody knows I walk in there very proudly, right? Yeah. No. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just been, it's been, it's been, um, it's just been probably one of the biggest experiences that I, that, that I've ever had. It, it really is. And I, I see where Reverend Kev has said in sharing our stories, we find our deliverance. And I, 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 that's what I would pray hope for, yeah. you know, that I can get delivered <laughs> <laughs> from, from some of this angst, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 um, discomfort. Yeah. you know, and then it be able to take it to the next level right. that I believe that God is leading it to. That's right. And yeah, and I know that he is, I know that he's doing that for you. And, and, and while Odell is, is overjoyed, he's, he's telling, he's sharing something with her as well, because she has had a great loss. And then for her to now find this joy is wonderful for, for us to see. And so in our podcast, what Odell and I try to do is share that life interruptions can come at any time. When we expect it from a student of what you what happened with you, or it can just happen in our lifetime and, and they can either make us better, we can try and get through that, or they can last. And so we have moved to just accepting the interruption and trying to move ourselves into helping ourselves get through that interruption. So we'll just continue well, to talk. Know, yep. Excuse me. Uh, mm -hmm. It just came to me that, that Odell and you, you know, I was like, why is this under interruptions? And I'm just now seeing... <laughs> that, that, oh, this is crazy. I am just now seeing this is an interruption. <laughs> oh yes, God. it is. I'm just now seeing that. I love oh. it. I love it. That's exactly right. I'm That's telling exactly you, right. I, the interruption for me, see, I'm still with my mother. Yep. The interruption is mother, her career, right. her. So that's the interruption. I love but it. This is oh, okay. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. I love that you were with us and recognize that. But you know, we, and this is why we do this. This was actually Odell's baby when she, when she lost her baby to yeah. have such an interruption in life, but she knew to, to, to not make it something that she wanted to dwell in is to share her story. And so we will continue to do this. We'll continue to talk about life interruptions and we will share our stories. And today's podcast again is in celebration of Women's History Month and not just Women's History Month, but, but you as well for all that you have done for so many women to now be, uh, you are a life changer and this story is changing your life and you will share it with other people and it will change their life as well. And so we will continue. We know you're going to continue your work, but we will continue to watch you.
to grow and go through this this process and and help other women as well and know that we are always there to encourage you and that we are praying for you and as we will share this story with our audience as well we want to remember to tell them that um, please share. When we do these stories, we don't do this story because we just want to talk, but we want to share our story so that they, other people can share their story as well. So we would ask our audience to remember to like our YouTube channel and again, share this story because someone you know may need to hear this. So thank you, uh, Reverend Marsha, for joining us this evening. Okay. Thank you, thank sis, you for much. coming on. Thank okay. you, Christine. Thank you yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't leave yet. Okay, I won't leave. Thank you. See, she thinks she runs me. This is the other <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh.